Talk. I am your host, Olivia Price Digby. President Donald Trump's use of social media attracted worldwide attention. Prior to being banned on social media on January 8th this year, he frequently used Twitter and other social media platforms to make comments on other politicians, celebrities, private citizens, media outlets, and promoted political insights. From his official declaration of candidacy in June 2015, through the four years of his presidency, he tweeted over 34,000 times. Since early in his presidency, Trump's tweets have been considered official statements made by the President of the United States. Trump often posted controversial statements on his Twitter account. After pressure to ban him from multiple facets, Twitter permanently banned President Donald Trump's account last Friday. This came in response to Trump using the platform to incite the violent riots that occupied the U.S. Capitol buildings on January 6th. In a tweet, he stated the riots were totally appropriate, while also noting that there should be no violence. Twitter took the highly unusual step after concluding that Trump's latest tweets con constituted a risk to public safety. The president's account, which had over 88 million followers, had been suspended permanently. Twitter tweeted, After close review of recent tweets from the at real Donald Trump account and the context around them, we have permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence. Other social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube have followed Twitter's lead in banning President Trump as inciting violence goes against their usage policies. However, the world's opinion is divided over Trump's ban from social media. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has sharply criticized Twitter's decision to ban U.S. President Donald Trump, calling it a problematic breach of the fundamental right to, be, to free speech. Ms. Merkel said through her spokesman that the U.S. government should follow Germany's lead in adopting laws that restrict online incitement rather than leaving it up to platforms such as Twitter and Facebook to make up their own rules. Ms. Merkel's criticism of the ban was echoed by France's finance minister, Bruno Le Maire. He told France Inter on Monday that he was shocked by Twitter's move. He added, digital regulation should not be done by the digital oligarchy itself. Regulation of the digital arena is a matter for the sovereign people, governments, and the judiciary. The ban has also come under attack from Alexei Navalny, the prominent Russian blogger and dissident. He called it an unacceptable act of censorship that would be used by the Kremlin to justify his own blacklisting by state media. Free speech is dead and controlled by leftist overlords, tweeted Donald Trump's son, Donald Jr. The Ayatollah and numerous other dictatorial regimes can have Twitter accounts with no issue despite threatening genocide to entire countries and killing homosexuals, etc. But the President of the United States should be permanently suspended. Mao would be proud. Google, Apple and Amazon have suspended the social network parlor from their app stores. Many people are now questioning the future of free speech control in the hands of big techs. And this leads us to a larger question. What is the extent of free speech in our society? And where does public interest lie in the midst of that? I am joined today by Tahir Gora in our studio, who is a renowned journalist and strong proponent of free speech. Welcome, Tahir Gora. Um, so I, I am interested to know what your initial impressions are on uh, Twitter and other social media platforms. Um, you know, uh, response to Donald Trump and banning him? Yes, no, it is very shocking and uh, alarming. Uh, because it's not just about President Donald Trump. It's about free speech. Uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook and other social media outlets, they have power to, uh, to govern their rules. We understand it. But uh, we are also consumers of Facebook and Twitter and all social media. We all are family of social media. So in this scenario, I must say that it, we find it a little too over, over the boat. Hmm. Twitter is a private commercial space, and do you think that uh, private companies have the right to control what happens on their platform, or like what boundary of free speech lies within that? Twitter, Facebook, and social media, they are private companies, they are private businesses. 
but they need to understand uh, their consumers as well. Their consumers is, as I said, we the six, seven billion people on the planet are their, their consumers. Mm -hmm. So they have to respect uh, cons consumers' accommodation as well. It's, it's a two-way traffic. It's not just like that, uh, okay, this is our business, we'll not let you to in. Absolutely. Okay, so we are the six, seven billion people on the planet made Twitter, the Twitter, what it, it is today. Mm -hmm. We made fa Facebook what Facebook it is today. I remember when Facebook started its, uh, uh, you know, social media app around 2006, they were, you know, looking for consumers. And it was a very small kind of app and uh, uh, not very well-known website. So we, the people on the planet, made Facebook what it is. So it's, it's kind of a mutual relationship. They have to respect uh, their consumers' relationship as well. It's not just that we have to only respect, uh, you know, their totalitarian uh, thoughts. No, I mean, I understand they are good companies, but they should treat public as, as their consumers. All right, so one thing that uh, some foreign leaders such as Angela Merkel have uh, been saying is that they in, in Germany they have restrictions on um, the limits of social media and free speech uh, written into their legislation. There are not so many um, restrictions put on that in the United States and here in Canada as well. Um, what do you think the boundary is there? Is that a solution or, or um, do you think that they could react in a different way legislation wise? You know, I mean, uh, I don't want even governments to put uh, restrictions on media or social media because social media today is actually media, mainstream media, because they are the media, they are the medium that carry our thoughts. So if any thought carries hateful speech, if any thought carries violence in the speech, so there are already laws in place in our civilized part of the world, in, in all democracies, you know. And those laws are there in place already. So they can take care of those hate speech and violence messages. So what would you say to um, a someone who argued that Twitter was just uh, enacting the laws in place and and ensuring that that um, no hate speech was occurring and no violent actions were you know to continue. What, what would you say to people like that? There are courts, there are law enforcement institutions in the United States. They are supposed to take care of those issues, not the Twitter. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at this moment, we find Twitter is the supreme police. I think it's very key to point out that social media has kind of developed in, um, in its own vacuum where there are like no real policies in place and it was kind of ahead of the, the policies. It is kind of in this gray area where we don't, you know, there, there weren't things in place right at the exact time when it was being developed. So I think the points that you're making are, are very clear that it's very clear that there's a gray area and people are misunderstanding it on all sides. So there's a gray area yeah. as well as there are bl black and white as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I understand when we get confused, uh, uh, when we get caught up in those gray areas. But when there is a very black and white thing that if I utter any hatred remarks, if I utter any violence uh, mm -hmm. remarks, law enforcement agencies hmm. need to come first. They have to take action. So I have one follow-up question to that, yes. which is um, in the you know, so unprecedented cases such as Donald Trump's case, right. where he is the leader of the country and right. therefore has essentially the ultimate power, um, it, I mean, with nuances, of course, but um, 
when it is the leader of a country who is in charge of the 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 legal process to a degree um, are there like variations within that do you think or or do you think there should be subtleties um, should it be up to someone else you know actually it is all about politicization uh, precisely in the United States uh, for the past four years mm -hmm. President Trump has uh, never been accepted by his opponents as a legitimate president. Mm -hmm. Even um, uh, his uh, rival uh, candidate from the previous election, uh, Hillary, uh, recently called him a legitimate president. Mm -hmm. When he was about to take oath, there was a million march against him. There was a kind of a big protest, and he faced all those protests. Mm -hmm. So it is unfair to say that uh, President uh, Trump only provoked uh, his supporters. We have seen last year, mm -hmm. there were so many riots and uh, violent riots and many people got killed. Uh, so those were the riots never condemned by the uh, oppositions. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So we have to be very, uh, very fair. And it looks like now, uh, I mean, uh, precisely in the United States, uh, all mainstream media, they are kind of a party. Social media, I mean, you can look at the social media, Twitter and Facebook and all that. They have their own maneuvering sort of a attitude and they clearly tell the consumers, I mean, you and I, that which side they are. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of a scenario. So in that scenario, if those social media big companies claim that they are impartial, they are partial, right. uh, I must say. The only thing I'm, I'm concerned about the limits of free speech. You know, what are the limits of free speech? As mm -hmm. you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, German chancellor and French minister, uh, there is an old saying which is uh, uh, considered as the f um, principle of freedom of expression. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Right. Yeah. So that, that is the kind of a limit of free speech in my opinion. Great. Well, thank you very much for your commentary. It's a very difficult subject. Thank you for joining us in the studio today, Mr. Gora. This was News Talk with Olivia Price-Dickey.